My first job was sweeping floors in a tailoring warehouse where they cut clothes. And I had a big broom and I swept the floors and the boss said that's quite appropriate because you're going to become a sanitary engineer, so this is your basic training. In September of 1941, Gilbert Victor Levin enrolled in the Johns Hopkins University's civil engineering program. Three months later, Pearl Harbor was attacked. I went to school that fall, and I was an engineer, engineering student, and they were deferred because the government decided that engineers were necessary, and we better defer them until they graduate, and then we'll get them. As conflict worsened overseas, the military called for all able-bodied men, degrees or not. I had gotten into the ROTC, so I knew enough that I didn't like that militaristic style stuff, and I wanted to get in the Navy. But I had a buddy who was going to Hopkins with me, taking engineering, and he said, okay, let's do that. So we went down to sign up for the Navy, and I passed, but he flunked the physical. Refusing to leave his friend, Ray Smith, behind, both men signed up for the Merchant Marines in March of 1944. After passing the physical, they put us on the train up to New York. We went to Sheepshead Bay, and Sheepshead Bay was the training boot station for the Merchant Marines. After completing basic training, an aptitude test revealed that both Gilbert and Ray excelled in distinguishing Morse code. So I was very good at that, and Ray, my buddy, was also. So both of us said, we'll go to radio school, and they took us. After graduating from the radio academy, Gilbert and Ray quickly became radio telegraph operators. I had been very hot in radio school. I was the top code taker. He and Ray were ordered to Baltimore, where they selected a brand new Victory ship for deployment, the Tawanda Victory. And we took a streetcar and went down there and we got on and it was a beautiful ship. Loved it. After being loaded with military cargo needed overseas, the Tawanda Victory departed Baltimore on December 17, 1944. Our destination was, we didn't know till we got out and the captain told us, it was Naples, Italy. But we met down at Norfolk, 40 other ships, and we formed a convoy. And we had airplanes overhead, but a day out, our captain just zoomed south. He took off from the convoy. Over the next 10 days, Tawanda Victory steamed through enemy-infested waters alone. And we did. We ran south below Bermuda and then east across the Atlantic and then north to the Mediterranean into Gibraltar. And we did not get picked off, but I claim it's because of me. I claim I was a hero. Halfway across the Atlantic, Gilbert received a coded message for his ship alone. With his chief radio officer unavailable, Gilbert personally copied the incoming message. Hours later, authorized personnel decoded the secret broadcast. And the message came out, urgent, you are being followed by submarine on course, blah, 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 I missed that. Immediately change course to blah, 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 hold course for blah, blah, blah hours. Now. Nothing happened to us. I claim the German sub got that message and decoded it and went looking for us where we were not, and I saved the ship. After 10 days at sea, Tawanda arrived in Gibraltar for further instructions. From there, Naples, Italy. And Naples was destroyed. And the place was smoking and it stunk and everything was blown up. So that was my introduction to World War II. Over the next two weeks, Gilbert visited several other ports of Italy as Tawanda discharged her cargo. We uh, were surprised at how friendly the Italians were. We you know, thought these are our enemies, but they weren't our enemies. We unloaded partially uh, in Naples, and then we went up the coast to Leghorn, Livorno, 
and unloaded the rest of the way. It took 14 days to return to New York, and after a short time on leave, both Gilbert and Ray were back at sea. Uh, we went to Le Havre. While docked in France, Gilbert took a train to Paris. And we went to the nightclubs and just had a great time. It did not occur to me that the girls that we went to the movies with, met and went to the movies with, had done the same thing with the Germans a few months earlier. <laughs> the Tawanda joined a large convoy and headed up the English Channel towards England. As Tawanda passed E-Boat Alley, the fleet was bombarded by German E-boats and submarines. And they attacked us that night. They attacked our ship 17 times, but never got us. Our Navy ships were dropping bombs, and boy, these things would go off like mad, and they would ring against the hull of our ship, and it would sound like a great gong, and you would think the ship was gonna vibrate apart. The Tawanda Victory survived the night and docked in England. She discharged her cargo at several British ports and returned to New York on March 26, 1945. Ray signed off. So that was the end of our voyaging together. Why did he sign off? He just said he wanted to change ships. I really don't, don't know why. Gilbert signed on for a third voyage aboard the Tawanda. However, while docked in Galveston, he signed off to reunite with his older brother, who had just returned from deployment. After a short break in Baltimore, it was time to return to sea. Gilbert reluctantly signed on to another Liberty ship, the USS Henry Jocelyn. The voyage of my life. I was on that baby for 14 months, once and a half around the world. The Jocelyn steamed south for Panama with the obvious intent of heading into the Pacific War. And this was a long, long trip because the Henry Jocelyn was not only a Liberty ship, it was an old beat up Liberty ship and the engines failed so that we could do at best in the latter part of the trip down the Atlantic, four knots. While approaching the Panama Canal, news came over that Germany had officially surrendered. And we were told then we were going to the Philippines to join the fleet that was going to invade Japan. After 36 days at sea, in their final approach to Manila, Gilbert copied the news that both atomic bombs were dropped, thus ending war against Japan. There were 500 ships in Manila Harbor, 500 of every type, and we were going to invade Japan, and suddenly we didn't have to invade. That was a very happy time. Following World War II, the Henry Jocelyn remained at sea for seven more months, traveling to over five different countries before returning to New York on April 18, 1946. As the ship approached New York, it sailed into a Force 12 hurricane. In one three-day period, at full steam ahead, we made 75 miles. The Henry Jocelyn sank 12 hours after docking in New York. Gilbert received his pay in the Manhattan office. I made, when I got back from that year and a half long trip, I got paid off, it was $2,400. And I, you're hearing me praise all these places I've been to. I really did love going to sea. And as a matter of fact, uh, when we finally got back, uh, I thought for a while about not going back to school, but staying at sea. But my brother beat that out of me. Gilbert went back to Hopkins, where he acquired his master's degree. He then worked as a public health engineer for the states of Maryland, California, and the District of Columbia. In 1954, he joined a new consulting firm titled Resource Research. While working here, he obtained a PhD in environmental engineering. This firm was bought out by Hazelton Laboratories, where Gilbert established the Life Science Division. In 1967, Dr. Levin founded Biospherics Research, Inc., where he invented low-calorie sweeteners, safe-for-human pesticides, and much more. Gilbert's ability to find microbial life was so publicized 
that NASA awarded him a series of contracts to develop methods of detecting extraterrestrial life. And I developed an experiment that, yes, went to Mars on the Viking mission to Mars, and it did get a positive signal, which I claim was evidence of microorganisms in the soil of Mars, but since now it was over 40 years ago, nobody wants to cozy up to that idea. So what I'd like best is to finally have it acknowledged that this experiment detected life on Mars. <laughs>